In this uh, video, we'll talk about the second experiment which was performed to prove that DNA is the genetic material. This experiment was performed by Hershey and Chase. in 1952 and this experiment actually confirmed that DNA is the genetic material. They used T2 phages. These are bacteriophages which infect bacteria and the bacterium which was used was E. coli. So these two uh, organisms were used for their experiment. T2 phages and E. coli. Now let us first talk about the structure of T2 phages and then we will see what exactly they did. So a T2 phage is actually made up of only two things. There is a protein capsid and DNA as the genetic material. The protein capsid is normally a polygonal uh, sheet and there is a middle piece kind of a thing. At the end, there is an end plate and attached to the end plate are these structures which are known as the tail uh, structures. And this end piece or end plate has a perforation in the middle. So there is a perforation here. In this middle part, there is a spiral protein. So there is a spring-like protein which is attached. So this is the protein capsid. This dark line which we have drawn is the end plate. And these tail uh, pieces or the leg-like structure, these are known as tail pieces or end pieces also and here there is a spring like structure. It has genetic material that is DNA. Only two things that is protein and DNA. There is nothing else. What they did, they grew or developed these phages with E. coli in two types of mediums. They cultured T2 phages. And we know how we allow the uh, virus to multiply, the bacteriophages to multiply is viruses can multiply only in the host. So the medium which was given for their culturing or multiplication was one having radioactive sulfur that is S35 and radioactive phosphorus that is P32. Sulfur is a component of protein. This sulfur is not found in DNA. So when they developed these T2 phages in these two types of mediums, they got T2 phages here having this sulfur incorporated in the amino acids of the protein. Where this sulfur must have gotten incorporated are cysteine and methionine amino acids of protein. So these T2 phages which were allowed to divide in E. coli containing S35 developed their protein with sulfur which was in the amino acids. Second, the tetophages which were cultured in E. coli in a medium with radioactive phosphorus, what they got was DNA with radioactive phosphorus that is 32 and here the protein had sulfur. So now there were two types of bacteriophages which they had obtained. One T2 phage with sulfur 35 and this sulfur was a part of protein. Other T2 phage which had 
phosphorus 32 and this phosphorus was a part of DNA. So this is in DNA and this one is in protein. Now they made these T2 phages in fact E. coli in normal medium. This T2 phage and again when we talk of bacteriophage infecting E. coli the steps are very simple. The first step is adsorption that means the phage attaches on the E. coli. Second injection or introduction of the DNA into the host then replication and fourth is lysis of the host cell. Same thing would happen in these situations also but what they did they allowed this T2 phage to infect this E. coli. Then and this was done in a test tube. After some time, they centrifuge this. Adsorption means the virus is sitting on or attaching to the host cell that is E. coli. After that, it would inject its DNA into the host cell and then replication. So after this injection, the protein capsule which is outside is because it is loosely attached if we shake it or centrifuge it this is going to fall off the capsule is going to fall off and when we centrifuge it the bacteria being heavier would form the pallet part and the lighter capsule would form the supernatant so here are all these capsids only the capsid part and here would be the bacteria this is when after adsorption that is attachment and injection of the DNA when we centrifuged it these two parts get separated because the capsid which is just attached on the surface gets detached it is lighter so it would be in the supernatant part and the bacteria which is heavier would be in the pallet part. Same kind of experiment was done with the other type of phages. Here same thing first the virus was made to inject its genetic material and then again it was centrifuged. After centrifugation bacteria same because they are heavier in the pallet and only the capsids in the supernet and because this is only the empty shell we can say. So these are the capsids. So this is supernetted. And the lower part is the pallet. Now in first situation this is situation 1 and 2. In the first situation, they analyzed both. That is the supernatant and the pallet. And they found that radioactivity was seen or detected in the supernatant part. Was in the super natant part. Now why was the radioactivity in supernatant? Because as we can see they started with T2 phages which were cultured or grown in a medium containing radioactive sulfur and we know sulfur can become a part of protein but not the DNA. That means these phages must have had the radioactive sulfur in their protein. After centrifugation, the protein capsules, which are empty now, they are in the supernatant. And what went into the bacteria or E. coli in this case was the DNA which they had because they have only two things. So protein which was having 
super uh, sulfur radioactive sulfur were in the supernatant so radioactivity was noticed in supernatant in situation 2 or case 2 same thing they uh, analyzed both pallid and supernatant and here they found the radioactivity in the pallid part now why was the radioactivity in pallid region this time because pallid region has bacteria in both the situations and what we know here is the process after injecting the genetic material into the host cell then the genetic material replicates that means what must have gone into the host cell is the genetic material and as the T2 phage has only two things the protein which after injection of genetic material when it gets empty it is lighter and it is found in the supernatant that means protein is not going into the host cell what is going into the host cell is the DNA and to prove it the radioactivity was observed in case of the pallet here that means the DNA containing radioactive phosphorus actually was injected into the host cell and that again gives us the conclusion that DNA is the genetic material. So this is a confirmatory experiment we can say. What Griffith told us was initial part Avery, MacLeod and McCarty added on to Griffith's experiments and almost reached to the conclusion that DNA is the genetic material and here because we know the exact process how the virus multiplies in its host cell if it has to multiply it has to inject its genetic material and as it has only two things protein and DNA a DNA is injected that means DNA is the genetic material and it was also tested using the radioactive sulfur and phosphorus in this case. So this is the experiment done by Hershey and Chase which proves that DNA is the genetic material and in most of the cells we find that DNA is the genetic.